Well, howdy, folks, and welcome to another Casual Convo. This time I am again joined by Jennifer Pollock from North Shore Rowing Club. Jen, thank you for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. What's, well, I'm a bit worried about this, uh, this topic, uh, Jen. It's, it's one that uh, you may need to uh, give me some speeding fines from time to time because I'm, very, I'm going to be a bit passionate. So we've got to, we've got to control it, and I'm hoping you'll use the cool heads approach here. But the topic I want to discuss, as I've already given you the heads up, is what do we as coxswains want from a crew? Because we get told all the time from the expert rowers of how we should be doing our job and what we should be doing. So I thought, hang on, let's have a chat about what do we want them to do or what should we expect more from not just race day. I'm talking the bigger picture. I'm talking about commitment and training and all those sort of things. So we as with all these casual combos, there's no script. We're just uh, we're just going to run the gauntlet. As I said, I, if I run off the rails, you might have to reel me in a little bit. But um, where, where do you uh, where do you start on this one, Jen? What's your first thoughts when I say that? Yeah, when you first asked me the question, I'm not very often floored for an answer, but this time I kind of was and went, okay, what do I want from a crew? I know what I expect from a crew, and then I thought, what do I want from a crew? And I thought. Before I can ask what I want from a crew, I think the crew has to first of all trust me. Yeah. And trust that I'll keep them safe and that I will give them the best advantage that I can give as a coxswain. And I think until I've established that, then I'm not sure that I can even ask or if I ask a crew for a response, whether it'll be effective. And I guess I can compare, because I cox women's crews and men's crews. And I'm female, so I can probably say this. Women always have um, an excuse or an answer, and they're very capable of coaching from the middle of the boat. See, I sorry to interrupt. I find the reverse, and I don't know whether that's <laughs> the male-female interactions because I find the yeah. women are always happy to take the advice, and whereas the men, it's like yes, they, they they'll all coach from the middle of the boat, and they know a lot more about coxing too. But. And maybe that's right, because if you look at what happens internationally, quite yeah. often they swap around as well. Hmm. So my boys um, are, are great. Even if I make a mistake, there is no no negative comment in the boat. In the boat, in, in fact, they're probably less critical than than I am. Yeah. And they absolutely trust me. So if I'm um, so my examples on the Lane Cove River, you get lots of um, guys on kayaks and paddle boards and stuff like that that love going as close as they possibly can to you so you think okay game on let's see if i can go close enough but not actually touch you but be really super close yeah wake them up a little yep and and the boys will absolutely trust me to do that um yeah the same as if we're racing and i don't want to yield against another crew when we're training they'll absolutely trust me that yeah i will keep them safe so i think i think once i'm established trust and respect, I think, as well, yep. then I can ask. So if I'm in training, I guess what I expect from my rowers, if I make a call, I expect them to do it. Yep, that's fair I'm enough. Not, I'm not doing it to be mean. I'm no. not doing it to be vengeful. Mm. Um, I'm but doing... Just, sorry, just to clarify, Jim, we're not talking about a 1K race here. We're talking no. in general. We're talking yeah. you know, training the yeah. day, 5 o'clock in the morning, it's dark or whatever, mm-hmm. and... You know, they've got to be responsive and all that. That's what we're talking yeah. about, isn't it? Big yeah. picture. Yeah. yeah. And I think, so particularly in the dark, so the Lane Cove River can get very dark. Um, it's got lots of boats, it's got lots of lights, and there's many things that you can hit. And the crew needs to trust you to stay safe enough. Yeah. And I guess the coach does as well. So we were out in the pouring rain a couple of weeks ago with we the only crew that went out, and I'm not quite sure why, because it was blowing a gale and about Char- a third of... Character building stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> About a third of the boat filled up with water before we got back in. And the coach goes, Jenny, hug the boat, stay out of the wind. And I went, can't see the boats. <laughs> so that kind of goes for the coach as well, where I made an executive decision that I wasn't going to have the boats and I was going to stay out a little wide. Yeah. And when I and I just said to the boys, I'm going to stay wide of the boats. And they went, yeah, we know. Yeah. So they yeah. trust me. But if I say... And, and we have a few conversations in the boat, like if I say tap down to or to you short. Yep. And when I was first coxing, I, when I got out, I get this explanation as to why. Yeah. And I said, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah. I'm commenting what's different. Yeah. Seven people are doing one thing and you're doing something else. And yeah. from what I've learned about rowing, that's not going to work. So I'm not right. saying it's right or wrong. I'm just making an observation. Yep. But I mean, fierce 
So the boys are fiercely loyal and they will do whatever I ask. Um, yep. About a year ago, we were out on the Lane Cove River in the morning, picked black with no coach. We were doing 30 strokes racing. Senior women do it. We're doing 30 strokes racing in the other direction. And one of us on the, was on the wrong side of the river and it's still up for debate who it was. Oh um, yeah, that old chestnut, yep. Yep, <laughs> and I just saw this flick of white and I don't know what it was, this flick of white and called an emergency check and the boys yep. stopped the Bang. boat next. Yep. Yeah, wow. and they went, that was great, Jen, let's go. And I went, oh, I just need a minute actually. Because we stopped the boat, slid sideways beside the senior women's that actually yep. hadn't seen us coming. Yeah. And, and to, the respect I have for the crew for absolutely knowing what I meant. An and instant response and, yeah, and instant reacting response. in the, in the yeah. right way. Yeah. And yeah. there was no, like, we didn't say anything to the other crew. We didn't say anything to each other. We was just rode off after that. Yep. And I think that's my example of what I expect from the crew. Yep. So yep. In the boat, it's quiet in the boat. Oh, yeah. I'll be coxing. Sometimes I'm cox and coach on a Tuesdays and sometimes I'm sitting between the coach and the crew. And I will be doing what I believe to be the most effective and the most efficient way to get the training done. Yep. Any comments, I'm happy to take them, but once we get back on shore, not in the boat. Yeah, I, I liked your comment there about getting the training done. I've got this uh, this this uh, view on things is that there's two types of things that happen when you go under the water. You either go and row or you go and train. Mm -hmm. You've got to do both. Um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of people spend too much time rowing and they don't do any training. They come in and they think they've been training. They don't understand that you're not training at a heart rate of 80 and uh, tapping. <laughs> that's not training, that's rowing. There is a yep. substantial difference and you cannot win races by rowing. You have to do some training. but. I'm going to go down a rabbit hole with that conversation. But <laughs> so, so the key, the key thing there that you're saying that you you um, you expect rather than just want is mm -hmm. is trust and respect, which mm -hmm. obviously is is a tough one to achieve. Um, yep. If if you're sort of new to the group as well, yeah. possibly at the start of a season. So just on that, do, so would you have a crew that you you'd have a crew that you regularly train with through yep. the course of a season? Yep. Yeah. So, so that I think is absolutely key. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have that luxury. I, um, I mean, I have in the past. We've had some good, good uh, structure. I'll be mm -hmm. using that word a few times tonight. <laughs> some good structure where we've had that, where we can yep. work with a crew, um, and and you know, so so my um, my wants slash expectations are sort of slightly different because, you know, the, the trust thing I've got from a majority. Mm -hmm. um, you're not going to have from everyone because there's always someone who knows more. Um, I don't know. After uh, you, well, talk, I, who think? Let Yarra. me clarify. Who believe they know more? Um, well, I no. figure a coxswain that gets shortest course at Yarra, there's not much, <laughs> not much comeback to that. I would have uh, thought. You no, could've... they got. Don't worry. There's plenty of comebacks to everyone. Really? Oh yeah, plenty, plenty. Don't worry I have to come that. down and sort them out. <laughs> Oh no, um, but um, no, but that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't phase me that side of it. it it's um, uh, what what uh, actually let me use an example. About two years ago, we had a um, a women's masters quad, um, and they were going over to France for the uh, world masters um, championships, and um, and they said, "Oh, can I help out?" And I said, "Oh, fantastic! Yeah, I would love to." And so. Bear in mind, this is all happening over winter. So we first, yeah, I yeah. can't remember when we first started. I turned up and the first thing I did is I got the, got the girls together and I said, right, what do you actually want to achieve here? Do you, and then they sort of looked a bit blank, but not in a negative, well, not in a negative way at all. I said, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to do some work? Do you want to go out and, you know, do your best? Or do you want to just row through so you can go over there and have a bit of fun and feel comfortable? And they go, oh no, we want to do the best we can. I said, okay, perfect. So then went away back to the drawing board, put together a 12 week training program Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is all through winter in, in Melbourne, as you can imagine, not overly pleasant. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking here, well, I'm committing my time and effort and mm -hmm. they were following through with that. And they were the, absolutely, we, we followed that as close as we probably could have. There's a few times you couldn't row, but for, for that 12 week program and a few people coming and going, what have you, that's fine. Um, and that's, that's where I saw really good structure and commitment from, 
from the guys. And then they came back and they won a Melbourne head, you know. And um, and Melbourne heads, that's up there with uh, with head of the arrow in, in in my book. And if you go and win that one, and and we had a great race to win that one too. We upset the uh, crew behind. I wasn't going to let them through. But anyway, that's part. It, legitimately, I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to be rude. But the point I'm getting at is that that was a great crew to work with. And I had a similar one last year. We had a four, a men's four. Um, and, and the same sort of thing. We worked a, a program. It wasn't as formal as the 12 week here it is, but every time before we get on the water, I say, right, this is what we're doing. And there was never any pushback. There might've been a bit, oh Jesus, are we gonna be doing that tonight? Um, but you know, so um, then that was really good. Whereas this year I haven't had any of that. And it's just been in here, out there, whatever, turn up on race day and we still don't even know who's, who's doing what. Yeah. Um, and so my biggest want um, and I even call it, you probably could call it expectation, uh, is structure. Because without structure, you're never going to have success. Forget about it. You, you can go and have a row. And, and within structure, there's probably three words that I think of is, is commitment, discipline, and focus. And, and so once you've got your structure, you, and the rest comes into place. And um, I, I think there's been a bit of a view that I just like to flog people hard. And that's not true in the slightest. Um, I, you know, if I do it, let's call it a, a 90 minute session no not even no call it a one hour session of that there's only three to four k of hard work and you're probably going to chuckle at that but <laughs> but you know that's that'll be all there is and the rest is warm up and cool down you know yeah. so it's not a, it's not hard work in the slightest but they, but they come away thinking i'm just flogging them and it's not the not the yeah. case well i think you need to be fit as well so yeah we say we get our technique on the water and we get our fitness on the erg yeah Yep. And the crews have expectations as well. And I coxed a, a ladies crew that I absolutely love to death that um, work really hard. They're a great bunch of girls and they just quite, kind of haven't got where they want to be. And I've coxed them occasionally. And we went out last Sunday and we had a bit of a different. So we pulled up next to the senior women. So senior women are DE. Yep. We are H. Right, Me. right. Yep, yep, yep. So the coach goes 30 flat out see what you can do yep all right. all right boys is back let's go so we rated 42 at a split of 131 Ooh, over 30 geez. strokes could not have done it for 120 but man could no. we do it for... so we so, so you've got serious boat speed there when you <laughs> oh just serious focus like yeah yeah, you know, yeah. If, if i call that the boys will have and they said is this flat out no way race pace boys race yeah. pace yeah so then um with the coach we went out with the girls and i said why don't we do the training program and he said they can't they can't hit 34 and i went that's only because they don't think they can oh yeah yes so i sat in the boat and said come on girls senior women did 38 i reckon you can do 40. and they said it'll be ugly and i went ugly's cool has yep. got to be pretty just yep. show me what you got they rated 41 and <laughs> stopped the boat and they were so happy yeah and i think i think maybe they did it because i had the expectation and i set the expectation that they could do it yeah yep. and they just responded without well, that, that comes back to your trust Mm. Yeah. See, if I if I say that to a, depending on the group, uh, mm. if I even suggest before a race forty, I know full well. Oh, look, not forty. That's probably getting a bit amb ambitious. But if I suggest we're going to go down a course at thirty six, thirty eight, mm. uh, before the race, there will be pandemonium within the crew. Sure enough, we go down the course thirty six, thirty eight, and go. That was a good race. Yeah. yeah. Why, why why do we keep having this barrier? of yep. rating and and that's why i actually don't even like the conversation of rating before a race to be honest i, I leave it out because people go into this panic mode of oh I'm, it's gonna hurt well oh, yeah no shit, it's well, gonna that's, hurt that's, <laughs> that's part of what our ergs are about and i think that's what yeah. i called with the women at the last weekend and i went if we're gonna win it's gonna hurt yeah you're gonna go now how yes. much do you want to win and then just took up and i think i called them up like wasn't even every 20 strokes it was less than that probably every 10. And I was telling them exactly where we were and that yep. we need centimetres. You but, need to do it. Yeah, and well, they did. They I, just... I, I like to uh, use the word minor discomfort. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it's going to hurt. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I think it, it all does come back to that. So, and, and clearly, from what I'm gleaning here is is you've got the structure yeah. in, in your club. And, and it's a bigger club than obviously mm -hmm. ours. But, um, and, and that is what sets up for the success as well but 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 all those it's all built from people you know committing and and um, and and trusting in the system and having a go but the ergs the ergs is a good one because yep. um I've, I've been doing um ergo sessions on a monday and wednesday we do it on zoom i'm actually on a treadmill funnily enough um but but they all do it on the uh, on the ergs um and i've 
have a bunch of programs that I've been working on. It started at the beginning of COVID, actually, and just kept going. Um, and I think about two years ago, we'd have the majority of the crew would be doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight, out of our eight that is rowing on Saturday, one member was doing it. You know, um, now there's there's a there's a, a group of probably of that particular eight. Um, when we do get it together, there's a group of probably two or three of them that do it. Well, that's not eight. You mm-hmm. know? And, and and you're always only as weak as your weakest links. You know. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I was. I I also coxed these women that rated forty on Sunday. At the 500, they were winning. It was yeah. only a 900 meter race because it's in Lane Cove. So 500, they were winning. 600, everybody else had caught up. I called them up and they couldn't do it. Yep. And at the end, they were really disappointed. And I yeah. said, "You're lacking fitness." Yeah. It's, it's just and, simple. Yeah. Yeah. And and one of the guys in my boat, Coxes, is sometimes that so we're quite committed to this crew. And he come up and he goes, you girls are finally competitive on your technique, yep. but you're not competitive on your fitness. Yeah. And they said, what should we do? And I went, well, we talked last year because we've got 12 guys in the crew and you need eight in a seat. Yep. I'm talking about selection. And I said, well, apart from your birth certificate, maybe it's who does the ergs. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. do the ergs, then maybe that correlates to commitment and maybe you get to sit it out. Mm. Yeah. But all of um, all of my crew do the, do the ergs. Yeah, yeah. And how many ergs a week would they do? They only had, one's compulsory. Most of them yeah. do two. Some yeah. do more than that. We yeah. just do the two, and I think two's I think yeah. two's adequate uh, for for the purposes of you know masters masters rowing because also yeah. at the same time you, I mean I'm conscious of the fact that um, from a physical training perspective they can't do it all the time. Um, there's a few few people that can, but most you, you can only focus at a short short stint. Of, yeah. And that short stint effectively is a season, but um, you know, so it is hard to really push through. But there's no, there's no doubt that yeah. You know, and, and and the erg is is all part of the discipline, isn't it? Because who the hell yeah, wants to do it? No one wants to do it. I I asked the senior women a few. Well, I think I've been coxing at North Shore ten or eleven years, and I asked the senior women what their secret to success was because they won more than they lost of, you know, most most of the season. They said it's the erg. We row through that pain barrier every yeah. week. So when we get called up in a race, we know what it's like and we know yeah. how to row through it because we do it every week. Yeah, yeah. And I went, is that the difference? And they went, yep, that's pretty much the difference. Well, one of my annoying sayings, which I think everyone gets sick of, is is I say train the brain, not the body. You know, so if, if you're doing those hard erg sessions, you're, you're training your brain to, to know that can cope with a bit of pain. Yeah. You can, you can do it. And, you know, it might only be for one minute, but that might be all you need. You know? Well, that probably yeah. is. Yeah. Race. yeah, you got two fifty to go in your neck and neck. Yeah. Well, that's that's all you need is that minute. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, that's and, exactly and, right. Just yeah, and that was one of one of my calls is commit. If you're really calling up hard, so and so our head coach likes to likes us to as coxswains to call up every ten strokes. Yeah, some of my crew hate it. Yeah, of course. And so. I guess that's when I'll listen to what they're saying as well. So I might call them up, but I don't call them up in a hard ten. It will be a little different. It will be effectively the same. Yeah. But so, yeah, so I absolutely, I think getting back to what, what I want. And I think, I don't know if that's what. So that, so again, coming back, no, but the, what you want there is you want them to respond to your call. Yeah. yeah. And and I must say they do. And I remember a, um, being out at Cirque and Sydney is always, Sydney Uni is always a crew that we want to beat. And yep. we were neck and neck, and they were in lane one, and we were out in like lane seven. So really hard for Coxon to know exactly where you are. Yep. And I listened to the um, live stream afterwards, and they went, the Coxon's called North Shore up. Coxon called North Shore up again. Coxon's called North Shore up for the third <laughs> time. And the boys responded every yeah. time. Every time. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it does sound like I'm being a bit negative against the guys. I'm, I'm not because even like on race day, when, I, when it is, when you are <laughs> down in the trenches, so to speak, they do respond. Um, yeah. As best they can, you know, um, and and I don't, you know, we don't have any passengers for lack of a better word, um, yeah. but you know, a few more ergos would be nice. But what's what's your view, and we all deal with it, is the old egos. Um, I'm not sure if any of my crew going to hear this. But... Yeah, that's the see. This is why I say you might have to put a speeding fine on me because we could go <laughs> down into a spot where we're going to so, get ourselves in strife. I think part of a coxswain's ability to motivate a crew is to know each individual rower, yeah. yep. know where their ego sits and know how to make that fit in the boat. Yeah. 
so to be respectful and when you've got like we've i've got anesthetists hand surgeons lawyers goodness and then type yeah. a personalities that never happen to listen to anybody else ever and they're yeah. in a boat being told what to do so they might like that actually where they can just get maybe. you know zone out a little bit possibly could even be a thing that they, they zone out a yeah bit just, so oh, I, i'll get told what to do for a change <laughs> and, I, and i spend time getting to know what they're like yeah also getting to accept how brutally honest some of them can be. Yeah. Like you know, my stroke and I, they say we're like an old married couple. We fight and spat and carry on. Yeah. And we'll go, don't steer. And I'll go, well, friggin' row straight then. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Yeah, yeah. Get off, get off the rudder. Well, I yeah. wouldn't need to if you if you got equal pressures. <laughs> if you row straight, wouldn't need it. Yeah. But and then yeah, so I mean, it's really hard to explain. So the people in our cruise could not be more different. But gel is one when we're in the boat and even yeah. when we're not. So we don't very often do the social thing, not as much as the girls do, but we go out maybe twice a year for dinner. Yeah. And even at the dinner, there is mutual respect for everybody despite the huge differences. Yeah, yeah. And I'm that's, not that's the, that is the thing with, with rowing. I mean, it is, I suppose, if we're to be honest with ourselves, there is certain demographic of where we've all come from, for lack of a better word. Um, but um, but but there is there is a lot of different personalities in the groups, and and people want different things out of it as well. Um, and yeah, to, to to juggle all of that, and I think if you if you're working with an eight in particular, you're going to have multiple different types of personalities, and you've got as you said, you've got to you've got to treat them all individually. But when you're in a group environment, <laughs> you're working towards you're working within the realm of of, of keeping everyone somewhat happy um yep. while while trying to get the best out of them um and sometimes getting the best out of them might be trying to shut one or two up because you don't want to let the six down or, or what oh you. absolutely yeah. and i think so if that happens um my crew can tell when i'm not happy mm. and normally to be get out of the boat grab the cox box and just walk up and say hey can i just have a chat yeah, yeah. it'll be at the one person and then it'll be a pretty straight i was a bit disappointed that or i noticed that and i don't understand why and it'll be a pretty short and considering that i'm five foot two and most of them are well over six foot they could, <laughs> they could stomp on me if they wanted to but they don't and 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 if i see something that i think is destructive to the team that will yeah. be that will be not called out because that's too aggressive but it will be addressed yeah in a respectful way but pretty directly yeah yeah as well yeah yeah and that all comes back to your trust and respect doesn't it yeah they're, they're, but it's not, mind time. you, I can say that as a coxswain, I'm respected. But in a club with, I think, I think we've entered eight crews for Hottie right. out of shore. Yep. Yep. yep, we've got three coxswains. Oh, yeah, so, that's going to be challenging. <laughs> yeah. So um, you, you can kind of, as a coxswain, I'm in a pretty happy place because if I'm not happy, I just go. I'll go somewhere else. I've got plenty of options. I can sleep in. Thank you. Yeah. Because yeah. at one stage I was getting up six mornings a week and then I went, you know, oh, oh, this is my hobby yeah. and this isn't a lot of fun anymore. No. And and there was a bit of a difference of um, values, I guess, yep. and beliefs. Yep. And I went, that's cool. You go your way and I'll go mine. That's fine. Yeah. If you need me, I'm here. But, you know, we're not meshing real well. But you can do that. So I think I'm in a really privileged position of being yeah. able to. Yeah. Well, there is a, there is a massive shortage of coxes, obviously. And, um, and uh, you know, that... That's a that's a whole nother conversation. We won't go down that uh, that that road right now. But um, it is a shame that it's like that. Um, it is a shame not more people want to do it uh, yeah. because I find it extremely rewarding um, and and I, I find it quite enjoyable. And especially on race day because there's a lot going on. And and I actually row occasionally on race day in the masters ones. I'll have a bit of a bit of a dabble from time to time. Um, but. But I find that after a day of coxing on a, a Masters Regatta day where I might have done five or six or seven races, you're totally exhausted. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you, you, and, you, and I remember back to when I was only rowing and going, I'm much worse off than when I row, you know, because the yeah. mental aspect to it and you're constantly, from the minute you wake up in the morning, you're thinking about what's next, what's next, and, yeah. you know. Oh, I'm, absolutely. Like, the buzz is amazing. Mm. And it's not every race, and it's probably less races than more that the coxswain wins, particularly in a sprint. 
Yeah. But when you know, when you come over your line and you know that it was your race calls that made yeah. the difference, that's an awesome feeling and you don't even need anybody else to tell you because you know you've done well. Yeah, you're right. I, I, but, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, so I try, so we're trying really hard to train people at North Shore and to get them in the boat and to see, particularly if they're like rowers that come through the learn to row that are never going to make it into the senior women's squad or a senior yep. men's squad to be able to make a difference by coxing. Yep. But then as well, and this is probably my little get on a soapbox. Um, I was at a regatta and we've got two relatively new coxswains and I went, where are the numbers? And have you checked the bow ball and have you checked <laughs> Check everything? the heel straps. Yeah, yeah to yeah, make sure yeah. everything is race fit. And they went, <laughs> what do you mean? And I said, coxing in a regatta is mm. way more than jumping in the boat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, the guys need to trust you to know that they're going to grab the boat and put it on the water and everything will be just the way it needs to be. Well, I was a bit of an amateur the other week. I was, uh, I was actually jumping to another club's boat and we sort of, it was, I was sort of running between things. I went down to the staging and, um, and I hadn't checked the heel straps. And sure enough, this this thing was a little bit of a mess, this boat. And so there was a last minute panic and uh, and I managed to get some um, zip ties and we yeah. sort of zip tied them down and, and they sort of let that fly. But uh, I think it was, uh, you know, you don't want to be doing that as there's a queue of boats lining up to go off a, oh, absolutely. Off a pontoon that's about two boats yeah. wide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, and I think all of that is a given and also in your pocket. So, mm. and I didn't last weekend, I've been carrying a Phillips head and a flat short screwdriver in my pocket oh, yeah. for 10 yep. years. Yep. Haven't yep. done it for the last six months. We needed it last weekend. Yeah. Went. That's what happens when you get lazy. As soon as you don't take it. Yeah, well, I, I'm a bit the same with the, with the spanner and I don't, you know, <laughs> oh no, it should be right. And sure enough, you never need it when you don't have it. But um, yep. yeah, it's part of, it's part of the fun of it all, isn't it? It is. And I think that's part of the trust that if the guys ask for stuff, that you can do yeah. it yeah and that you know like the boy they'll go out and say what time's race time and what lane are we in and, and the stroke yeah. jesus guys you should know and i went no it's fine it's my job how, how the hell do you remember your rate i mean each time it's especially you're doing five or six you, I mean, like what am i now am i a6 or b3 or <laughs> well i um I, I can't remember where i was and i wear shorts not a zooty yeah. And up my, up my left leg was all my races for the day. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the division, the lane yeah. and the handicap. And you just pull it up and go, yeah, that's what I'm doing next. This well, is where I, I, I do a little spreadsheet and then I, I have it written in my bag, but then I've also <laughs> got it on my phone. So I just zoom yeah. in. And, so I know, you know, and my spreadsheet is basically what I call my running sheet. It's like yeah. pick up bound number at X time. And it's very well structured so that I can't yeah. you know miss something. And I do it each time sort of, uh, um, you know, as a, Fine. Yeah, Fine. yeah. I used to do that, and then one of the rowers borrowed my because I had it written on the race schedule. Oh, and I came running oh. in for what it was, and it was gone. So now oh, I, no. I I ride it on my leg. Yeah, in, they can't um, they can't borrow your leg. <laughs> my leg, wherever I am, I can't lose that. So I'll yeah. be fine. But, and I I think that kind of goes full circle as well. So the trust and the respect. Yeah. And if I don't let them down, then I figure I've got the right. Not, yeah, I think I'm given the right to then ask them to do stuff when I do. Yeah, yeah. I, Mind you, and to call it out, because sometimes I'll go that soft. Like yeah. at the, it was out one moment, we run by 200 metres over a 900 metre race, but oh, yeah. we got yeah. to the 500 and I accused them of being soft because the yeah. split had fallen off. And it was obviously because they could see how far we were behind, in front of everybody else. And I went, yeah. But That's not the point. We're no, no, you still race, and and you, you know you still pay respect to the opposition. They may be a long way down, but you don't just turn it off and then tap it across the line. That's not what the point's about. You've paid your paid your fees. Yep. Do the race, and if nothing else, you've had a uh, you've got a, had a good workout. Yeah, that's exactly well. You keep the good workout. I said we build yeah. the base. This is just a stepping stone, not yeah. back up. So, and then when I said that and called them up, they beetled over the line very nicely. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I think it's, it's a very complex relationship. And now that I'm, I'll be moving away from North Shore as I'm going to Queensland to try to find someone to step in yeah. to my crews. And I don't believe that you train a coxswain in a crew that they're going to operate with all the time because in the rower's heads, they're always going to be learning. Yeah. So you have to train them somewhere else. And that yeah. somewhere else is really tough. Yeah, it, it, it is a it, yeah, good point. And I think that that's one of the um, interesting. If we go down to junior coxes, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. is um, that and and uh, with this podcast over the certainly the last few months, we've done a fair bit on the um, schoolgirl rowing mm -hmm. um, and all that sort of stuff. And there's there's some coaches that really embrace the coxswains and and they really they're, they're training them and they're coaching them, whereas mm -hmm. others couldn't 
couldn't give a damn about the kayaks. Yeah. And how, how does a kid, when they're, I don't know, 14 years old, jump in a boat and know what to do? Because you're not, there's no one else there with you. <laughs> well, I've actually been as a BRO, and you and I, um, because I raced masters, I yep. boat race official school, yep. school races. And, oh, okay, yep, yep. And I think it's pretty important to be positive and to really offer, help. Offer the advice kids. and yeah. suggestions, yeah. So I was watching this little boy come out, and the boat's going like the wrong way, and I thought, <laughs> no one's even told him which direction you push yeah. here. <laughs> so I came and went, hey, how do you enjoy coxing? And he looked at me and didn't know what to say, and I went, is this your first race? And he goes, yeah, and I went, it's really simple, buddy push the way you want to go and I'll help you. So I actually coached him down the course. Yeah, and yeah. And he yeah. goes, thank you, miss. <laughs> and the rower was calling it up and I went, stroke, I don't want to hear you. There's a coxswain in the boat. Coxswain's oh, in charge of the boat. Yeah, yes. He yes. goes that and I went, no, coxswain's the only voice I want to hear. And the coxswain's going, I don't know what to say. And I went, yeah. <laughs> Get, get your well. You got to get your voice. I, I reckon I've, I've said that. You, you've got to you've got to come in with confidence, even if you're lacking it. Yeah, that that's exactly sense. right. You, mm. because, because if you you're not going to get trust if you have no confidence. And I think that's a fine line. So I was watching a coxswain at Yarra that didn't know what they were doing, and they were offered support by several coxswains that said, you know, I was, I was just watching this yep. that they coxed Yarra a few times and did they want any help? And the comment was, No, I've rode it once. <laughs> and the coxswain goes, but you're facing the other direction. And she I said, rode it once. Yep. Oh, no, that's, <laughs> no, that's fair enough, Jen, because I've got enough uh, rowers that will give me advice on how to cox. <laughs> yeah, but no, so they, and this very experienced coxswain that I absolutely would have listened to, if she'd come up to me and said, do you want some advice? I'd go, absolutely. Yeah. Even if I knew everything she said, I would never yeah. say no. No, that's right. You might, and, um, you might get something out of it. Yep, and it didn't end up so well for this coxswain that it only rode once. No, funny that. <laughs> that's exactly the, the nature of the beast, isn't it? Yeah. But, uh, but that's where I love those, uh, you know, head races. They're just fantastic. And I, 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 what I, I, um, I really got into this year was the boat race, Oxford Cambridge. And we did oh, a yeah. little bit of a show on all of that. And, um, and oh, my God, I watched that and I go, gee, that would be fun to cox that thing. They, they get, you know, that's serious, aggressive Cox, yeah. you, know, you you are going for crashes you know you're yep. you're really trying to intimidate and um you know that that's <laughs> and you can be a hero or a zero pretty quickly <laughs> oh i think so and yeah i mean even the head of yarrow's like that yeah like, yeah you, you can only cox yarrow aggressively you yeah can't. oh that's right yeah yeah you and, can only you got it and and, you, and and with that you're really and i had that last year i think the crew from um from sandy bay and tassie and mm. oh gee they listened to every everything along the way um, yep. And did it, and it was because I knew obviously the points, and knowing the yep. river backwards is a massive advantage, obviously. Yeah. But but I knew the points where you had to be in X position, yep. you know, three hundred meters up. It's like yep. I, I need to be in that position. You can't be, you know, and and they followed all of that. You know, they had a tough uh, eight odd k's, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a tough race. <laughs> that's but the way it goes. Yeah, that's right. And I, there, there was one year that my men's crew won, and. Yeah, and so our heart rate's cox, and as you start at Yarra, is probably about 180. I reckon it's tapping along faster than most of the rowers when they're yeah. maxing out. Yeah. And dry mouth before you get through the first bridge, and and yeah. we're doing okay. And this crew, another crew yelled out what they want to do, and that's when I used to swear I don't swear now because boat race officials aren't allowed. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't agree with this swear. I, I might use it occasionally if if in like a head race. Not mm. in where there's people around you. I think no, that the, right. you're, dumb, you're dumbing it down a little bit. But if mm. you've got the if you've got the space and the opportunity, you can sometimes use it in a positive way. But yeah, yeah, uh, I normally use it when I think they were dangerous. And and my stroke said, Jen, can you get us out of here? And I looked to the left, and his oar was going under the bow of the boat we were overtaking. And I oh, went, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might sort this. Yeah, <laughs> guys, I've got about three more strokes before this is all going to go to custard. Yeah, so, but that, but that's kind of fun. And he just yeah. looked at me and said, "Fix it." And you go, "Okay." And I called the crew up and said, "We need to get out of here." And they yeah. they did. Yeah. And then there was another time when you know the whole overtaking rule and who yields and all that kind of stuff. And the crew behind us wasn't going to yield. Yeah. And they said, "We're both not going to fit under the arch of the bridge." And I went, "Yeah, we will." So oh, we did. Oh, well, you was, did. We did. There was very little. In fact, we were kind of chaining between each other. The oars. Yeah, so just would hold together and just you both. They both got through. Luckily, I think yeah, you're yeah. probably both sweating as much as each other. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's funny you say the heart rate thing because um, 
um, obviously rowers don't see that nor nor notice it. But um, mm. with the with the boat race, they had them the, the coxes. I think last year they had them plugged in, and they were mm. showing the heart rates at this sort of the one eighty mark and stuff like that. And I was going, yep. what one eighty? What are they doing? But you look at you know the, the motor car drivers. They got you know they're right at two hundred when they. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I mean, and I think part of the challenge is you've got to be super calm. So mm. the the novice cox and she go. It's not only coxing the race. But you need your crew to be calm and relaxed as you're coming up to the start. Yeah. So whatever you do coming up, like I never do drills that, that they're going to fail at. No, I, I agree. Agree. Start, yeah. Yeah. You make sure it's a really good, a really good warm up. You make yeah. sure they're confident. You make sure they're relaxed, and then you and and I, and that's part of it. So yeah. you're trying to trying to tell them to be relaxed while mm. the coxswain is the exact opposite. You're absolutely wired as you're coming up to the race start going. You know how many minutes have I got? Because it's our responsibility to yeah. have them in the marshalling time. It's our responsibility yeah, to be in the right lane. Not, not get the yellow cards. I've had a few of those. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, so we, we we have rolled off under the the mm. tangent of talking about coxes. But but what you're just saying there, heading to the start, um, and and what we're asking. So um, I yeah, I'm, I'm exactly along the lines of what you say there in relation to what to do before a start. You know. It, last thing you want to do is destroy confidence mm -hmm. that's just a, an absolute train wreck um yep. and and if that means you are pulling back your warm-up or you're not doing starts you're not doing it you know it, it's simple as that yep. um and and that then comes down to where this whole thing is about what you want from the crew and they've got to have trust mm -hmm. that you you can read the read the mm -hmm. playbook and you know that if we go and do that right now you're going to lose your confidence and if you yep. lose your confidence in a 1k race uh, and you, you you bugger up that start well it's it's pretty much game over isn't it oh absolutely and sometimes as well now that i think about it there are times when like my relationship with stroke is really really close with the stroke oh, yeah. and the boat yeah and there's never any criticism of stroke but there are a few hand signals like the Shh, you need to be quiet or yeah. you need to stop yeah um kind of conversation where you, i'm just trying to control I guess the vibe that's going through the boat. Yeah. And oh, I, I'm not. Yeah, absolutely. If I'm communicating directly with Stroke, I'm covering up the mic and pulling yeah, yeah. aside. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. there is a, it is a, 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 a an important relationship that mm -hmm. it's, and it's a two way one. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely a, a two way uh, relationship that one. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so I think, yeah. So what I expect, I still go back. It's a really hard question, and, and I don't expect anything until I've proven myself. I think. Yeah. The Cox, and now that I've been at North Shore for a while, I think they kind of know what I'm like, good or bad. And the good is that I'm a pretty good racing Cox. The bad is I've got a really bad temper, and I'll tell them exactly what I think if they're not careful. That all sounds good, though. <laughs> but it, it, I like what you just said there, good racing Cox, because that's that's yes. where I uh, I would put my my skill set mm. down is into into race craft. Um, and that comes from um, 40 years of doing competitive sport and not just riding yeah. my main sport is, as, as you know, is triathlon and so forth. And that yeah. is about strategy and executing it and sticking with your, your discipline of all of those things. Um, and also from a rowing perspective. Um, but yeah, to, to me, it is all about the race. Um, and you have to take the risk, it, 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 depending on, you know, you, you know, I mean, I know on Saturday, looking at the start list of what, I, what I'll be expecting will be the outcomes. Uh, if I go into something knowing all right, this is going to be a bit of a row through because that Melbourne crew are going to dust us up. Yeah. You, know, you know, we'll just keep it low key. But but if I know there's going to be something in there and, and we're 300 out, we're going to be doing something. I mean, we're not going to be, you know, we're not, you know, forget this traditional race plan business. We're, we're, we're playing by what's unfolding in front of us at that time. Yeah, I must say I have a very loose race plan now. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm very much reading what's around me. Agree, and, exactly agree 100% with that. Yeah, and also yeah. when I'm training, some of the stuff I call will be to see what reaction I get from the crew. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, some crews I call splits, some crews I'll call rating, some crews I'll just call distance and where they are. Yeah. Um, even different calls, so march through works for some crews. March away works for some yeah, like that. Yeah. other crews. It doesn't mean anything. Yep. So spending quite a bit of time, like using a range of different calls when I want stuff to happening, and then looking down and seeing what the response is, and going, yep. okay, for this crew that didn't work, and for this crew it will work, and yep. then tailoring it to the crew to know when I make a call, I know I know what I'm going to get because I know what the crew will do. Well, you, you also can see the speed, and and mm -hmm. I, I get really frustrated when there's conversation about that was a crappy row and i'm like 
but we just had the fastest <laughs> 1k we've ever done i don't care how crap it would cause it hurt it hurt you know because it's only about the boat speed at the end of the day if you're racing if that's what it's about and that is what it's about and the beauty of this sport it's very simple the first one across the line is the winner um, yeah, there's right. no gray area and that's usually and that is always the fastest boat yeah yeah. Yep, and it doesn't matter if another clock's went off course, you no. get across the line first, you win. Yeah, exactly right. And, and, and I think, so sometimes I'll ask when they'll say that was a crap race and mm. I'll, I'll break it down a little bit afterwards. And normally that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the person that said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and what they meant by that, because if it's something that I can fix, then I will incorporate that. So you know, the stuff like I'll never ask for anything unless it's an emergency stop with less than two strokes warning. Yeah, yeah. And all that kind of stuff, because you'll have a couple of guys go, yep, I'm right on the next stroke. And there'll be two guys somewhere else that have got to take three strokes to figure it out. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. But it, yeah, I, I think, yeah, I think it's a real art. And sometimes you just don't gel. Like, yeah, one particular crew at North Shore and I got out of the boat and I went, I'm not your coxswain. Yeah. And you, you're went, gonna, it's, there's going to be that. And you, it's like everything in life, isn't it? You just, you're just going to be people you don't get along with, no matter how friendly you want to be. It's just the nature of it. And um, and then the same can apply in this in this instance. Well, we've we've been chatting for ages. I could keep going, obviously, but the takeaways I've got here, and I, I you threw out words that I was not expecting, um, which is great. And I probably said some things that you're probably yeah. expecting, but but you started straight away with the trust word. And I'm like, oh, I didn't think of that one. That's a ripper. And you said trust and respect basically mm -hmm. was what what you expect from your rowers. Um, and I, th I think one of the keys to that is. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to throw myself in here and say, well, you need you need what I was talking about as structure in order to get those two things. Yep. Because if you don't have the structure, you won't have the consistency and you won't have that you know amount of time with the crew for them to say, oh, yeah, okay, that person does know what they're doing. Let's let's follow along, yep. um, I think. So we've got the trust and respect. I love those two words. I use the term structure and of that, I break it down into commitment, discipline and focus. Um, yep. and, and all we've discussed in all of this has been around those those words if it's as simple as a few words but yeah um, i wonder how many rowers are going to listen to this <laughs> Pretty interesting. i wonder what criticism i will encounter down at the club from those that do listen to well, this just tell them i'll come down and have a chat with them you'll, have, you'll sort them out yeah, yeah i will i'll sort them out well yeah. I, I think i've been i've been pretty good actually i reckon um you didn't need to issue me any speeding fines i i, no. I, I didn't go off uh <laughs> off too aggressively because i can be quite passionate about this topic if i'd had half a dozen beers first this could have gone really <laughs> pear shaped but... hey that's my secret when i've got a stressed crew yeah, I come yeah. Up line and go two beers and yep, they know yep, what bang. I mean now, which means just relax, guys. Yeah, yeah. just relax. I yeah. like that one. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Now, it's been great, uh, Jen. Thanks yet again for, uh, for joining me. And um, we, um, we've got our states, not this weekend, next weekend. We, we, you've, mm -hmm. you, you have, you've just had yours, haven't you? No. No, we've got yeah. our states after nationals. So go oh, figure okay. that thing. Yeah. yeah. That goes mm -hmm. around the wrong way, isn't it? Uh-huh. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got something to do with how busy Cirque is, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Not right. really sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah Are you going right. to Tassie? No, no. <clears throat> Look, um, I'd love to, um, but um, I'm not going to go to that much effort and be uh, 10 lengths out the back. And, you know, um, not saying you have to go to win, um, but you do have to. Oh, I think Nationals is kind of about that. I've never been to Tassie. I've heard about it and how oh, far yeah. away you've got to stay and how cold it is and it's, it's, it is a bit of an effort um we went a few years ago and um um and it was it was great we we lucked out on the weather it was we went just down for the last day uh and for the first three days it was windy and cold in tasmania yeah and the day we arrived the sun was out it was about i don't know early 20s dead dead still if you get bored wow. if you get bored look on youtube of the cardinal <laughs> masters uh rowing and uh, there's a there's a we got the uh, had the live feed going on it was just one of those absolute ripping days yeah um and um and yeah it was that was quite spectacular but uh, i think that was one out of the bag that would never be replicated so i don't think that had happened this time around um, yeah it's it's a it's a lot of hard work to drag is. boats down there and then mm. you know what's left in the club for other people to row while oh, you're yeah, but, for a yeah, week yeah. to go yeah. down and back and yeah so it's not my thing um my boys wouldn't go down the yeah. some of the senior women are going and they said will you cox and i went if you're desperate and you give me a month's notice and you've got absolutely nobody else yes yeah yeah coxswain, but otherwise i'll give it a hard pass thanks i'll just yeah. sit here no, it's, 
I mean, it is a spectacular place if 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 the weather is right. That's for sure. But no, it's a lot of effort to go to. So yeah, we, we'll be uh, I'll be pulling up stumps pretty much after states, um, and uh, we'll see how we go there. And the beauty of states is they hand out three medals, of course, and so you can be uh, right. you can be the top seventy five percent and win a medal and think you're great. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's the end of your year's hard work, isn't it? So we're focusing yeah. pretty hard. Um, and my challenge to the girls that I coxed was you get yourself fit and they won't row through you at States. That's your goal. So they've got well, themselves yeah. a little sheet now that they tick yeah. off and they do their ergs. And I went, you've got everything else. It's the last 250 metres that you need to learn to hang on for. Well, they've got the time. You're still a month away. Mm, that's exactly right. Yeah, you've yeah. got the time. That, you know, you, you just say, right, I'm going to get serious because a month is plenty of time to build that fitness up. Yeah. And then I might, I might need to talk to you about coxing my boys in Yarra. Because they said, oh, Jen, you can still come down to Cox Yarra. And I said, look, I can. But if you're not coxing all the time, I believe you will lose your edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, and I know a ripper cox. <laughs> um, these guys oh, geez. have got the ability to come in the top two. In oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's normally where we sit. We, we struggle to beat one of the Queensland crews, but the rest we can normally stay pretty competitive with. So. Yeah. And they're, they, they're a tr- good bunch of boys that would, yeah. though I might need to talk to you because they're saying you can fly down. I said, yeah, I can. But I think we need to be, there's two things. If you get another cox and you can't ditch them. Yeah, yeah. But also if I haven't coxed for six months, I, I don't I, know. I think, you're, uh, I think you're underestimating yourself there, Jen. I think it's, it's like riding a bike. Well, I'd like it's, to think. It, I mean, it's, it is. It's, 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 it's inbred. I mean, it's like... Um, you know, I mean, the, the coxing part of it, it is, it's just, it's instinct. You're not thinking ahead of what you're doing. You're just doing it. Yeah. You know, it is instinct. And I know, yeah, courses are different, but, but you know, you go like, we've got Albert Park this weekend. I know an Albert Park as a second last boy has a big dog leg off to the right. <laughs> uh, I hope it's to the right, otherwise I'll be in trouble. But, you know, so but you, remember, you remember all these things. You might have only yeah. done them once and you still remember them because they're distinct. And, and as the cox, that's your job to know those sort of little you know, Do you know how I train for Yarra? For a month before, I yeah. watch a YouTube video oh, yeah. from Des Moines every single day. Sit on the floor on a cushion and watch it on the TV and go down that's the river. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty good. Turn me around and try to get me to come back the other way. I've got no idea where I am. No idea. Yeah, yeah, the reverse of it. <laughs> I can't go reverse, but I can but the thing, go down. The thing that makes such a difference for us, and we're, we're going on far too long now, but the thing that makes such a difference for us as locals is the uh, is the currents. Mm-hmm. And, and it is so different. Um every time you go up and down that river uh it, it really makes a massive difference the winds the currents uh, are huge uh and especially around the bends not so much the yeah. big bend but the other some of the other bends that are a little less scary but they have massive impact um and you know yeah if you you get the luxury of it when you're training in it to sort of get a better feel I, I totally agree because people said to me about big bend and i said i don't find big bend the biggest challenge if no you're no like- beside the tree on the right before yeah. you start to turn you'll be fine yeah but there's some other bends that can catch you out much more the, the, the worst one really is the um you know i don't know if, if, if the names are but at the end of what's called the fairview straight you turn under the wallen bridge yeah yeah, yeah the, the the little jetty on the side and then yeah. you've, you've got about 100 meters to be under there and that that's what had me worried the whole you know the night before that had me mm-hmm. anxious and that's that's terrifying in training let alone racing um, and, well, the, uh, going yeah. under that Wallen Street Bridge, you could be lined up mm. and you look up and you're not lined up anymore. So you line up again, look up yeah. and you're still not lined up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See, and and the current up. really flies through there because it's narrow. Um, yeah. So you can be really caught out on, on that one. It's, it's, it's brutal. Um, and there's only room for one. <laughs> yep. And only just. Because I remember just. my stroke, because um, I tell him where we are and I said, about to go under Wallen Street. And he said, are you right? And I went, oh, good. And at that stage, the boat just kept drifting off. Like I'd yeah. get it in place and it would drift off and I'd get it back and it'd drift off. And he goes, you're right. And I went, yep, all good. Yeah, 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 all good. He doesn't have to see your fear. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Got sunglasses yeah. on. He can't see. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, part of fun. All right, we're going to have to wind it up. Okay, so thank you so on, much. Just, thank you very okay. much, Jen. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, best of luck in a few weeks' time for your states. Yeah, and, you uh, as well in a couple reckon, of weeks. Yep, yeah. and I reckon we'll be chatting again very soon, no doubt. Absolutely. Take care. Thank you for your time. All the best. Yeah.